Hey folks, Yusef here with Impact Soundworks, and today we'll be doing a deep dive into strumming using Shredded 3 Arch Top. Today I'm going to show you six different techniques jazz guitarists use to strum, or what we call comp, the same chord progression. And while we are focusing on Shredded 3 Arch Top, as well as jazz guitar arranging techniques, keep in mind these techniques will work not only with our other guitars, but also other styles of music as well. We'll be looking at six blocks today, going from easiest to most complicated, and introducing new arranging ideas with each one. Each block will use the first eight bars of the classic standard, All the Things You Are, written by Jerome Kern and Oscar Hammerstein. This simple but widely used style is what I call basic jazz guitar comping, which uses four note seventh chords and syncopated rhythms. I start all of my blocks with two key switches. The first is C0, the sustain key switch, which we'll need for chordal playing. Next, I always input A sharp minus one, which turns fourth string off, just in case I accidentally hit some of the fourth string key switches. These key switches can vary by instrument, so be sure to check the tact tab on your own instrument. Now that we're using the sustain key switch, the next thing we need to do is add the chords. Playing chords with Shreddage 3 is as easy as either recording them live or penciling them in. It's pretty simple, right? Now, in terms of rhythms that are idiomatic to the style of playing, it's important that you lean heavily into syncopation. More often than not, you'll find yourself on the offbeats. For example, of the 16 hits in this block, only about 6 are actually on the beat. So now let's go back to that example I was penciling in and add some rhythms to it. This block also features some basic chord articulations that can help add a sense of realism to your mock-ups. If you look here and here, you'll notice this chord has its upper voicings staggered from its bass note, and this chord is rolled. Staggering chords is a nice way to break up the monotony in your track, and it's as easy as separating the bass from the upper voicings. This technique forms the basis of styles like bossa nova and walking bass. Rolls, on the other hand, are a fun way to emphasize specific chords or end a specific section. Rolls are done by simply arpeggiating the chord. Try experimenting with both starting as well as ending your roll on the target beat. Next, let's talk about velocities. In this block, I'm not utilizing a very large dynamic range, but I did find it sounded most natural to use stronger velocities on chords that sustained, as well as on shorter chords that fell on offbeats. This is because jazz often incorporates a time feel which emphasizes the offbeats. Now, the chord voicings I'm using here, and every other block for that matter, are all guitar specific and very common four note seventh chords. This sounds most natural, but isn't absolutely necessary. As long as you keep the voicings between maybe three and five notes, you should be good for this style. And for the non guitarists out there who are interested in using guitar voicings, we've not only included the MIDI data for this entire session, but in the description, you'll find some resources on guitar voicings. If we want even more realism in terms of how these notes are voiced, we can manually adjust the hand position knob located here in the GUI. This knob anchors your chords to a fret location on the neck, which then helps the algorithm to more appropriately voice your chords. Pretty cool, right? To automate it, right-click the knob and then select Learn MIDI CC Automation. You can then move any MIDI CC you wish to be the control for that knob, and voila, they'll be synced up. In my case, I use CC16. If we head over to the piano roll, you'll see my automation lane for CC16 here. 
watch the yellow outline on the GUI's fretboard to see how the virtual hand is moving. Lastly in this style, let's talk quantization. Almost all of my blocks here use swing, a time feel integral to the jazz style. Swing is applied to the ands, or offbeats of eighth notes, and I found a 90% swing got me most of the way there in terms of how I feel swing. I also found that rushing some of the chords definitely helps provide that push that jazz comping so often uses. This second block builds off everything we did in the first, and I'm calling this approach the Freddie Green or Guide Tone Technique. It's a style of guitar characterized by evenly played quarter note strums, often on only two strings at a time. Let's take a listen. This swing style of guitar arose in the 30s, a time when guitarists needed to be loud and provide a punchy foundation for the rhythm section while simultaneously not getting in the way of the melody. This led to guitar players playing mostly two note chords on the D and G strings, often playing the third and seventh of the chord. This is exactly what I've done in this block. Now, this block introduces us to a few new concepts within shreddage. The first is the strum key switches. If we navigate over here on our contact keyboard, we'll see four key switches, strum up and down, as well as strum up and down partial. You can use these to perform any strumming pattern you want, but this specific style uses almost entirely downstrokes, so we'll be focusing on just the down all key switch for now. Implementing the strum key switches is a breeze. Firstly, record or pencil in your chord progression. Next, navigate to the notes which act as your strum key switches and pencil or record those in on top of your chords. This will trigger the respective up or down strokes. How long or short your chords sustain will be determined by the length of the key switch. What's especially amazing with this technique is not only how fast it is to execute, but how clean and organized your mini roll becomes. Next, let's talk about the strum speed map, located here under the strumming tab. In the previous block, we arpeggiated the last chord in the sequence to simulate a roll. Sometimes doing things that way makes sense, but most of the time you'll probably want to use the strum speed map. Now, this strum speed map changes the speed with which the pick brushes the strings. At its fastest, it provides you with the default strum speed. Getting slower, it provides you with variations that are great to throw in to humanize your strumming. And at its very slowest, it does beautiful and realistic rolls. When it comes to rhythms, just straight quarter notes is basically the name of the game. In terms of quantization and velocities, nothing fancy is required here, so you can just adjust those to taste. Okay, so this third block is in the Manouche style of French jazz guitarists like Django Reinhardt. This is an evolution of the swing era style jazz guitar that we were looking at previously. Now, obviously, playing an electric arch top through a pickup and an amp, it's not going to give you the same kind of sound as a Selmer style guitar. However, in recent years, this has become commonplace to do, and so it's a good style to know. Django is famous for using three-note voicings. The two-note voicings we were using in the previous block actually form the basis of the Django style. To make this block, those exact voicings were copy and pasted into this example. To turn them into Django voicings, all we need to do is either add a root or a fifth in the bass on either the E or A strings. It's really quite that simple. Another thing that sets this and the previous block apart is the addition of upstrokes and chokes. This style of guitar fundamentally uses the same quarter note strum pattern we saw in block two, but this style of playing implements frequent upstrokes to add more variation and push. Downstrokes work just as upstrokes do, and using them is just as simple. So chokes or choking is when you 
mute with your left hand, and simultaneously strum with your right, producing a rhythmic hit. In this block, I mainly did that on the offbeats. In this style, it's important you emphasize beats 2 and 4, with higher velocities than 1 and 3. You also want much more variation in terms of strum length. You'll notice this track doesn't just feature regular short strums, but also very short and sustained strums. You might also find upping the EQ frequencies around 1 to 2 kHz prior to going into the amp might introduce more articulation into the sound, which for this style of playing could be useful. So the main idea behind block 4 is to show you just how far we can take this two-note voicing idea from block 2, turning it into something much more fanciful. You probably noticed the addition of slides in there. Slides are accomplished using the legato slide articulation, and they're a great way to add extra style to your jazz comping. Now, legato slide isn't enabled by default, so let's go engage it. If you open up Tact and then navigate to the second page, you'll find the leg slide articulation. All we need to do is engage that. If you don't have legato hammer on engaged either, go ahead and turn that on too. Before we talk about how to use legato slides, let's first get to using hammer-ons as they're related. Hammer-ons, like slides, are another technique for achieving legato on the guitar. Instead of the same finger, or same set of fingers, sliding from one note to another, hammer-ons are when a new finger catches the vibration of an already sustained note with a new note on the same string. The effect is less smooth than slides, yet easily more common on the guitar. To hammer-on your chords, very simply sustain the previous chord's notes over the new chords. So long as you have the articulation engaged intact, this actually doesn't require any key switches. Keep in mind, to execute this properly, you'll need to make sure the second chord can be played on the same strings as the first. Let's compare the sound of picking each chord to the sound of hammer-ons. Now let's do the same thing, but with slides. Slides work just as the hammer-ons do, but with the added step of adding the key switch under the overlapped chord tones. Let's hear how hammer-ons sound compared to slides. Next, let's work with the fourth string key switches. Comping isn't just about chords. If you listen to anyone playing harmony, regardless of style, you'll often find single melodic notes dispersed here and there to add a bit of flair. At the very bottom of the contact keyboard, you'll see seven or eight keys highlighted in orange. These are your force string key switches. If you play a note in shreddage with one of these key switches engaged, the note will be played on that string, assuming it's within range. Shreddage normally chooses strings automatically, but this method gives you extra timbral control. Simply pencil in the key switch under the note or a group of notes you wish to anchor to that string. The highest of the four string key switches, in this case F sharp minus one, disengages four string, and is good to add at the end of a sequence if you don't wish to use it afterwards. In this next block, we begin to approach solo jazz guitar arranging, introducing us to the idea of the walking bass. Now, the concept is simple in principle. A single guitarist connects chords with bass lines. Now these bass lines tend to be made up of mostly quarter notes with smaller rhythmic embellishments here and there. Let's take a listen. There's a few ways you can approach this concept. The first is to figure out your chord voicings and rhythms, and then find a bass line to act as a connective tissue between them. Conversely, you can lay down a bass line and then add in your own voicings. Our new concept in this block is pulling off to open strings. Guitarists often do this to simulate the sound of an upright bassist, walking bass. I've highlighted each moment this happens in our block here, so let's take a listen.
Shredage 3 limits the range of hammer-on and pull-offs by default. The hammer-on range option displays this range in semitones. To achieve our desired effect, we'll set this range to 21. Now, all we have to do is pull off to open strings here and there. These can be placed when moving from note to note, or when switching to another string, but really anywhere will sound good. All you need to do is sustain the note over the open string and ensure you have legato hammer-on engaged intact. You might also need to utilize the force string key switches to ensure the open string is properly used. This last block takes the concept of solo jazz guitar to its logical conclusion. In jazz guitar, arrangements like these are called chord melodies. The main concept is to arrange the tune chordally, with the top note of the voicing being the melody. In arrangements like these, it's common to use lots of reharmonizations, so it's a great way for guitarists to really get creative. A handful of new concepts are introduced here. Let's start with vibrato. If you listen closely, you'll hear the highlighted chord subtly has some. All I did was open up the lane for MIDI CC1 and add it in vibrato to taste. This isn't something guitarists go overboard with when playing chords, so it's probably best to use sparingly. Next, let's talk about the pick string key switches. These are used when you want to play the individual strings of a chord, and it's easily one of the coolest features in Shreddage. To use this, let's pencil in a chord and sustain it. Play the chord once so Shreddage recognizes the chord. Next, add whatever arpeggiated sequence you want using the key switches. These keys, like the strum key switches, are velocity sensitive. Now, if we were to play this back as is, none of these notes would sustain over each other. This is useful for certain applications, but for this example, I want the notes to ring out. So I'm gonna add some CC information in the sustain lane. At this point, you could also add in your strum key switches if you wanted. Let's listen to this. Now let's go over artificial harmonics, or what some people call harp harmonics. These are really pretty ornaments you can have a lot of fun with when doing chord melodies, and guitarists like Lenny Bro and Tommy Emanuel are known for using them extensively. These work just like any other articulation. Just write or record their key switch at the appropriate notes. As for this block, I simply added a few at the very end, as is common. Let's take a listen. In terms of some general arranging tips for this style, the first thing I'd say is ensure there is a short silence between chords. You may have noticed I'd done this with the walking bass example. This will keep things from sounding overly legato, as chord voices can rarely be played one after the other on the guitar. Chord melodies are almost always rubato, meaning the tempo is very free and entirely up to the performer. Therefore, tempo mapping in this style is really important in order to get a natural sound. If you look at my tempo track here, it's absolutely all over the place, but that's just what sounded right. Also, even though this style is based around chords, don't forget to add variation by using intervals and melodies. And while I did say the melody is usually on the top of the chord, you can also add them internally to chords as well. If you look here, I actually added some melodic movement inside my chord. You'll find using the force string key switch will be a lot of help when doing this. As a guitarist myself, Shredded 3 continuously exceeds my expectations. Like all virtual instruments, if you know the ins and outs of its abilities as well as how to play to its strengths, you'll find yourself producing highly realistic guitar mockups. If you want to learn more about the Shredded 3 series, we've got plenty of great videos here on YouTube. For everything else Impact Soundworks, head over to our website, impactsoundworks.com. Once again, my name is Youssef, and I'll catch you next time.